Welcome back to our Total Sense Bite Size episodes. I'm Tom Henske, and I'm here to help parents teach their kids about money. Today, I'll be preparing you for your next money dinner time conversation with your kids. In this short episode, I'll give you a few questions to help prompt the conversation. Nothing more, just some helpful questions to ask, and I'll also give you some of the responses you're likely to hear. This should be enough to help pique their curiosity about money. You are simply stopping the trend of money being a taboo topic in the household. You're not trying to claim that you're money smart yourself. You're not trying to make them a financial guru. You're just getting the conversation going to open their minds. Let's jump right in. Today's conversation, breaking the news about taxes. I had a huge laugh when my son came home complaining when he got his first paycheck. Who is FICA? And why is he taking so much of my paycheck? Ah, another adult entering the workforce and complaining about the government's take. Helping kids understand this very adult thing called taxes is so imperative to their financial futures. As a financial advisor, I often observe my clients forgetting about it too when they do their own planning. When teaching kids about taxes, I found that the logical order to help them really nail down the concept in adulthood, it's two headlines. First headline, what are taxes? Second headline, what types of taxes are they going to end up paying? A few things that you might want to have handy for this conversation are a copy of your town's budget from their board of finance and a calculator. So here's how you'll start the conversation tonight. Tonight, we're going to talk about taxes. If you understand this one financial concept, it will really help guide your decision making later in life. When it comes to income and investments, what you want to remember is this. It's not just what you make, it's also what you keep. Step one, let's go big picture. Here's the question that you want to ask. What are the costs that go into maintaining some of the public facilities that we use? For example, schools. Now, stop right there and let them answer it as it pertains to schools. The answers that you're going to hear are things like books, computers, teachers and administrator salaries, things like that. What you might not hear are things like heating, air conditioning, water, cleaning the school, painting, fixing the roof, mowing the lawns. The list could go on forever. Once you've had that initial conversation on their schools, then take them back in time to when they used a public facility. You might want to ask, do you remember the time that we used the playground? Or we went to the beach, or the park, the library, the soccer field. Let them really build up a memory of some of those fun things that they were doing and what goes into actually funding those facilities. They are taxes. The next question that you'll ask is, who pays for all of that? The obvious answer that they're going to give is taxes. But you're going to follow up with the question of, what are taxes? You're looking for an answer that sounds something like this. Taxes are a contribution imposed by governments on persons, groups, and businesses for public purposes. Okay, step two, let's put it in real world context. Here's where I like to pull your own town's budget and ask this question. How much do you think our town spends on public services in the course of the year? You're gonna love this sample that I got, and let's just call it Town Anywhere USA. The budget in the course of the year was $210 million. Wow. Well, what is that made up of? Education was $128 million, over half of that budget. Then another $76 million were things in the town, like public safety, parks and recreation, public works, human services. And then there was a classification of other, which was another $6 million. That helps them understand what their hard-earned money is going to in all the things that they do in the town they live in. Now, step three, let's gamify it. I call this game, do taxes pay for that? Here's how it goes. You're going to give them the name of a state park, a baseball field, a supermarket, McDonald's, and you're going to say, do taxes pay for that? Now, we all know the skate park and the baseball field, taxes probably fund that, and maybe not so much the supermarket and McDonald's. Having said that, the supermarket and McDonald's certainly pay their fair share of taxes. Right down the home stretch, step four, 
here's where we're going to talk about types of taxes. The question you're going to ask is what types of taxes are there? Be careful here, parents. Let's limit this to three types of taxes. Let's limit it to income taxes, sales tax, and property tax. Income tax, you'll hear most people moan and groan about that around April 15th when the taxes are due on their prior year's income. What your children need to understand is that the more money they make, the higher percentage tax rate they're going to pay. I always like to use single filers since they are single filers to help them understand. For example, on the first $10,000 of income they earn, they're probably gonna pay a 10% tax rate. What happens for every dollar over the 10,000, they're now going to pay 12%. Here's how you help them practice this one. Imagine you are graduating from college and you're starting at a job making $40,000 a year. What tax bracket would you be in? They can figure out, okay, you just told me we're paying about 10%, 12% in tax. That means that I'm probably going to have to pay from a federal standpoint, $5,000 in total tax. Parents, don't get too caught up in the math here. You're not trying to make them a math genius on taxes. You're just trying to help them understand that the gross amount of money that they make is not the net amount that they'll bring home. The second tax is sales tax. This is the amount of money that's tacked on to their purchases at the store. For example, in the state that I live, there's a 6% sales tax. Now help them practice. Say, if you buy something for $10, how much does it actually cost you after the tax? And they'll say, okay, $10.60. Now build this out. What if it was $100, $106? What if it was $1,000, $1,060? So it adds up, especially with the larger purchases, and that's what you're trying to help them understand. The last tax we're going to talk about is property tax. This tax is usually thought of in relationship to homes, but certainly also applies to cars, boats, and a host of other things. But let's just really keep it to homes. Start by telling them what the property tax is approximately in your town. For this example, let's use 2%. And let's assume that the home costs $500,000. Wow, that's a lot of money. So 2% of $500,000 is $10,000 per year. We're finally there, step five, and I'm going to call these the bonus controversy questions. These questions are akin to starting a conversation about politics or religion, so I want you to be super careful. Here are the questions. Is it fair for us to minimize the taxes we pay? And the second question, if you can legally avoid paying some taxes, is it okay to do so? It's not too controversial, but enough that everyone's going to have an opinion. That's it. Now all you need to do is wrap up the conversation and put a nice, neat little bow around it. Here's what I would say. I think you've got the gist of what we were trying to talk about tonight. Depressing, but true, taxes are on everyone's mind pretty much 24-7 because they really influence our daily lives. As we said earlier, it's not what you make, but what you keep. Here's what we want you to keep in mind. People believe that paying taxes is a patriotic duty. It's important in life for everyone to pay their fair share. But in sound financial planning, we just try not to overpay. We pay our fair share, arrange our affairs in keeping taxes as low as possible. There isn't a patriotic duty for overpaying one's taxes. In short, here's how we want you to remember it. You must pay taxes, but there's no law that says that you've got to leave a tip. I hope you enjoyed our episode of Total Sense. A special thank you goes out to Verso Studios at the Westport Library. Tune in for our next Money Chat.